Hey yo internetters, welcome back to another pin spinning video and I'm happy to finally say we'll be learning the high two, which I believe is one of the most requested video out there currently. And so for those of you who do not know what the high two is, here's a quick video. I mean quick video. Here's a quick explanation of what it is. So for the high two, uh, it generally have a starting trick. And then after that, it will lead into the pin coming up on top of your hand. And then after that, it will fall off the side of your palm and you'll hit it up. And then after that, the pin will spin around, do a fingerless thumb around, and then you'll end it like that. Now for the high tua, the starting trick is a lot of variation that you can do it with. Generally, from what I can tell, most spinners, they start off with a twist exonic into the high tua, or they just do a thumb around into the high tua. And we could see from Pin Spinning Central, these two variations. And so if you want to know what other pin tricks are out there, please make sure you go check out Pin Spinning Central channel out. I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description below because he has a variety and a very big library of all the pin tricks uh, in pin spinning. So I'm sure you're wondering, like if the Hytua has a lot of variation that you could start off with, which one will I be using? And that's a pretty good question, right? Well, before I give you the answer, I just want to say that I'm not one to make life a little bit harder than what it needs to be. And Haitua is already really hard of a pin trick to learn, at least in my opinion. And so I'll take the easy route. And by that, I mean, I'm going to start off the Haitua with the thumb around, which to me, I believe is the easier uh, trick to start off in learning the Haitua. And with all of that being said, Let's just go ahead and take a look at how it would look when I first attempted the Haitua. So starting off, everything seems to look like it's going really well. I'm spinning the pin off my hand and it looks like the pin is spinning pretty decently, right? And so that's what I thought too. And so I just want to remind you that we're only a couple of seconds into the first attempt on me learning the Haitua. And of course it looks good now, but I would say a couple of seconds later into the video, it, it didn't go too well because apparently the pin it just started to decide that it will have wings and it just started taking off in many different directions. And so I'm pretty sure you could tell that when you have a pin flying all over the place and you gotta go and pick it up, that gets annoying very very quickly. And for me, that wasn't the best strategy to learn. I just want to see where I stand with learning the high tua. And so I started to break up the high tua into multiple steps. I did it into a total of four steps, five if you don't know how to do the extended thumb round. And I'll explain to you all of that in the next coming clips. And so I guess we'll just go into step one of what I did into learning the high tua. And so since I already know how to do the extended thumb around, I know how to get the pin to go on top of my palm uh, and the timing for that. And so if you don't know how to do that, I would suggest you get the timing down for that before you go to this step. The step that I went ahead and took for myself is that I would just spin the pin and have it spin on top of my hand. And then after that, it would just fall off and I just let it fall off. And I want it to fall off roughly around this section of my palm I guess you could say the side of my palm and so the idea behind this step on getting the pin to roll off on the side of my palm is to build the muscle memory and get the feeling or understand the feeling of what it's like to have the pin fall so that way I could get the timing down to move on to that next step and just a quick tip for you when you're trying to get the pin to roll on top of your hand like that I want you to think of it like one big extended thumb round and what I mean is, when you're doing the extended thumb around in slot 1 and 2, I want you to think of doing the extended thumb around, doing it in slot like 3 and 4 or close to the side of your palm. And so for the second step, I actually started to turn my palm to the side or have my top hand turn up to the side. So basically as the pin is going this way and right when it's about to fall, and I have that feeling that it's going to fall, I just turn up my 
so my palm would be like this, right when it's about to fall, I'd turn it up like this and it would just fall like that. And so based from what I can tell or based from what I'm seeing, and I could be completely wrong, so don't quote me on this, is that this turning of your hand is actually pretty important. And I think it's important because it sets the pin up to fall a certain way. So that way when you're flipping your palm over to do the spin of the pin so that it can roll around your finger, I mean your thumb to do the fingerless thumb around, it sets it up in that way. And I think that's what allows you to actually get the flipping to begin. And I think this is the setup for it. So I think you need to actually develop a really good muscle memory of turning your wrist over. And for the third step, I just added a jerk at the end of that twist up. And so what I mean by that is when the pin is spinning on top of my hand, right when it's about to fall, I turn my wrist up. And then from there, I just add a little jerk. I push up, right? And when you when I push up this pin, right roughly around this section right here. So it's you want it to be, I guess, above the center of gravity, like around this section right here. And when you're doing that push up on the pin, it will actually start spinning or the pin will actually start spinning and you want that spin on that pin so that it could come around and then do a fingerless thumb around and so as you can see when you started adding the jerk motion the pin starts to spin a little bit faster which i think is a good sign at least for me from my experience when i'm doing this step it felt really nice so i think it's in the right direction and so with that little added jerk we can move on to the last and final step which is step four once I got used to turning my wrist up and having that jerk of the motion, right? Once you have that jerk and the pin starts spinning, you will want to quickly turn your palm to up. So that way the pin could just do a finger and a thumb around. And so with the high tool I've broken down into each individual step so that I can practice and build up muscle memory for each and every motion of the high tool trick. The real question is, did it really help? And in my opinion, I think it did because it helps me develop the motion that I needed with my hand to actually do the high tua. Now, the question is, was I able to do the high tua after doing all of these steps? The answer is kinda, but no at the same time. And the reason why is because I spent a lot of time trying to get the high tua down. And when I say a lot of time, it took me over eight to 10 hours trying to get it down. And so after hours and hours of practicing the high tua, I managed to catch the pin every now and then as you saw. But then the thing is, it wasn't as consistent as I hoped it would be. And I started to make minor adjustments to the pins and how I hold the pin and etc, right? And so these minor adjustments, I made so much of them that I don't remember exactly all of the adjustments that I did. But what I will say is that I will talk about the things that started working for me and what I noticed and maybe that will help you. So generally when I'm learning new trick, I do a lot of similar adjustment in all of my videos, right? I adjust the speed at which I spin the pin. I adjust the angles, uh, how I spin the pin, where it could be more horizontal, more vertical, etc, right? And so for this one, what I've learned is I started to hold the pin roughly about right here, about halfway point of the center of gravity. And I would do a thumb around and I would tuck it into this small section of my thumb right here. And that's the one thing I noticed that helps me a lot. And as the pin spin on top of my thumb, I would turn my wrist like I'm doing the extended thumb around. But as I'm doing the extended thumb around, it's more like I'm trying to aim it to have the pin come between these two slots instead of this. And from there, the pin will start to fall. Now before I would try to have the pin fall vertically right where it would just fall off like this but it was messing me up a lot and I was trying to force that and it didn't feel natural for me so what I started to do is I actually just let the pin kind of fall like kind of sideways like this and I would just flip up my hand and I would hit it like slightly vertically and then the pin will spin around and come into my thumb like this and so with all of that I finally get to do the high tua or I actually learned how to do the high tua and it took me a total of 12 hours, 18 minutes, and 31 seconds. And I spent roughly about an hour a day, sometimes two hours depending on some days. Uh, and it took a total of two weeks in those times. And 
Yeah. And so, yeah, I would say that we learned the Haitua because we were able to do it three times in a row. Now, my Haitua isn't as consistent as I would like, so I will continue to practice that to try to get the consistency down. And of course, it's not also not the best in the world and I need more practice. And that's pretty much all I have for today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And like always, thanks for watching and until next time.